three minus three minus two. And minus three minus two would give us minus five, right? Therefore, now we know what D is, which is just minus five. Now, depending upon which approach you go on, go and do it by. Uh, so if we do it firstly with this one, so I'm gonna try and use the first one that I wrote. So it's the T of N of A uh, plus A. I'm, I'm just getting confused real quick now. Yeah. Does it really, for the general term, does it, does it matter if it's um, B in plus C or D in plus C? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I can also, I, I've seen books which say B in, but then I don't. Yeah, because like, we use B in plus C. Yeah, so it, it doesn't really matter. You could use that as well. It, it wouldn't matter. So, okay, maybe let me write it like B N as well. But it um, doesn't really matter because it, as long as it still signifies exactly what you want, right? Being the difference, the, the, the difference in between the numbers, right? So if I use this one, we look at A and A is the first term, right? So the first term is seven, the seven. So you'd put it in and say seven plus n minus one and not using the other formula yeah so this formula so what okay so because i it's possible that you guys are using different value um variables now so in this case when they say a they just mean the first term okay so the first term and then the d they signify the difference or the first difference let me see I mean, are you not using T n is equal to B n plus C? Are you not using that formula? We'll use it now. I said, I, 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 let's first do it like this, so you can see this way, and then I'll also use this one. Okay, so then it's minus 5, so it's times minus 5, and when you simplify this, this is 7 minus 5 n plus 5, and that would be minus 5 n uh, plus uh, 12. Okay. So that's T of N. Okay, if we use the other way, where it's T of N, right? That's equals to B of N plus C. Your B is the first difference, correct? So it's the first difference again. Okay. Yeah. And then your C is, actually your C doesn't have anything. It, it's not anything until you solve for it, right? So now you have B. Uh, B here is min minus five, so you'd say it's the T of N, and then you'd use it's minus five N plus C. And then from here, unlike this one where you just needed to know the first term and um, the, the first difference, and then you just substitute it and simplify, you get the answer. With this one, you will have to also take any one of the terms here. So maybe let's take the second term. So the second term would give us two, right? So you'd say two is equals to minus five of the second term plus C, and that would be minus 10, right? So minus 10 uh, plus C, and this is two. And then you take the 10, put it on the other side, that would give you 12. So then it would be 12. And then you go back and say, okay, then I'll T in is actually minus five in plus 12. You see, so it's the same thing. It's just mm -hmm. obviously the difference is that, okay, with this one, you just need to know two things. With Can this you just one, move the page up quick? Can you see something quick? The other one formula. Okay. Have you checked it out? Um. You write oh, first term. Yeah, that's the first I don't term. Know. Right. So the one is the first term, the other is the first difference. Yes. Okay. So this is a uh, first term. term. And it's the value of the first term. It's not the one, right, of being at the term, first term. But it's the value of the first term, which the value, value of the first is seven, right? So that's why we put seven in uh, the place of A. And in uh, D, it's just the difference just as the same when you get the first difference in this case and then um yeah so in this case um i guess the only thing you need to do there's two things you need to do 
you need to be able to find you need to be able to find the first difference after finding the first difference then uh you put it in then it's that right and then you need to find c so how can you find c you take any of the three right any of the values that you have given you or any of the uh, pa uh, uh value patterns that they've given you so if you took uh, negative three then it would have been the third term so you it would have been three equals minus three and then you would have solved for it or, or to, solved for c and then you would have found that c is 12 and then you come back and then you say okay t of n is equal to 5n plus 12 and then you're done other than that so both ways works uh whichever one you're most comfortable with use that one okay okay, okay and then 3.1.2 basically so now it's 3.1.2 I don't know. I think the lines actually make it make my handwriting more neater, don't you think? <laughs> so, so they actually is saying calculate the value of t20, right? T20. So uh, they want the 20th term, right? So the 20th term. Now we just use the formula that we have. So then it's just 20 plus 12. And then that would give us what? So uh, uh, I think that's 70, 20 times five is 70, no? No, 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 negative no, it, no, it's, it's uh, oh, it's, you got the answer, negative 88. Yeah. That's not 20, it, I mean, it's not uh, 70, it's, um, it's 90, no, 100, no, it's 100, and then, yeah, okay, awesome. So it's 88, yes. So it's 88, and then 3.1.3, uh, right? And then 3.1.3 basically says which term now. Now, if they say term, they're basically asking you for the n, right? So if they say yeah. term, which term in the pattern has the value negative 138? So then for this case, you take the t of n, right? Is equals to minus 5 of n plus 12. But now they want the term. Hence, then you say, I have the t to be minus 138, it was, what was it, 138? Yes, 138, that is equals to minus 5n plus 12, right? And then from there, you just solve for n, and solving for n in this case, then uh, you take um, one, 12, and it would be minus 12, so it actually 138 minus 138 minus 12, and minus 5n, so I just swap things around, and then that will give you minus 150. Um, and uh, this is minus 5n. And then we divide by 5, divide by 5. 50. Sorry? 50. 50. And then? 30. Oh, 30. Sorry. So it's 30. And therefore, it's the 30th term, right? So it's the 30th term. Uh, to give for 30. So T30 would be equal to negative one, three, eight. Okay. Oh. Okay. Awesome, right? Okay. Now we get to 3.2. Now 3.2 looks a bit more complicated, but uh, we'll tackle it as usual. And let me put in lines. I think, I think sometimes the lines bore me, but then sometimes I kind of like it. But anyway, anyway, so let me put in lines. So it says, we have six, and then the next term is 2x plus 1, and the, the last term that they give us is 3x minus 3. And then are the first three terms of a linear pattern. So they told us it's a linear pattern. And then they actually say calculate the value of x. Now, in this case, how could we calculate the value of x? So let's first take down the values. So they said it's 6, and then it was uh, 2x plus 1. And then we also had 3x minus 3, right? And then because it's a linear pattern, what do we know about a linear pattern? We know that the first differences are equal, right? The first differences are equal. So if that's the case, let's find the first difference and then equate them. So in this case, then it, it would be 2x plus 6 uh, plus 1 minus 6, right? And that would give us, 2x minus 5. And then as well, when it's 3x minus 3, 
minus 2x plus 1, that would become what? It would become x minus 4. And you saw how, that, how we got there, remember? The first difference, so we take the number that's ahead and we subtract it by the number that's behind it. So it would yeah. be 3x minus 3 minus 2x plus 1. But then when we simplify that, that would be minus 2x. So it's 3x minus 3 minus 2x minus 1. And uh, remember, it doesn't stay as plus 1, but changes to minus 1. And then it would have been 3x like terms. And that would be x. And then it's minus 3 minus 4, which would give us minus, uh, minus 1, which would give us minus 4, as you can see. Okay. Yeah. So that's how we got that it's x minus 4. But now, luckily, the, the, the thing is that I was saying was that, remember what we know about the first difference. We know that the first difference is supposed to be equal to each other for all the, the differences that you get, right? So here it's minus 5 between the second and first term. And then also it's minus 5 for the third and second term. So now we expect that as well, because they said it is a linear pattern, that these differences would be equal to each other. So therefore, then we could say it's 2x minus 5 is equal to x minus 4. Okay, right. And then from there, it's just solving for x because that's actually the question, right? They actually wanted us to solve for x, if you remember it. So they actually said calculate the value of x. So calculating the value of x from this point on, then we say it is 2x minus x. We took a uh, positive x, we put it on the other side, becomes minus x. Uh, it's negative 5, we put it on to the other side, so it's minus 4 plus 5, right? Mm -hmm. And that would give us 1, and that one. would give us x, right? So basically, our x in this case is just 1, okay? Is it clear? Yep. Awesome. Okay. So let's move on to the next part of the paper. So the next part of the paper is question four, which is still number patterns. And um, this one looks like it's quadratic number pattern, right? And so just before we even get to start writing it, what do you know about a quadratic number pattern? What's the most important thing? What's okay, what's different? What's the difference between it has a second difference? Yes, it has a second difference, right? And that second difference then we, we were able to work out the T of N, right? So here's the question. And the question basically now uh, states, okay. Now it basically says, okay, we have the quadratic number pattern. And as you said, the quadratic number pattern always has a second difference. So it's just drinking water. So it's four, P, it's 11, it's Q, and it's 22. And then they say, has a constant second difference of <sighs> one. So it has a constant second difference of one. And that's actually a very good clue, right? Why? Because that means if we get the second difference, we know that all of them are supposed to be equal to one, right? Because it's yeah. constant second difference, right? So in this case, let's first take out uh, in 4.1 says, show that P is equal to seven and Q is equal to 16. And basically, we have the, 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 the pattern, so uh, 4.1. So now with 4.1, what can we see? We have it's 4, and then I think it's P, and then it is 11, and then it is Q, and then it is 22, All right? And so from there, what do we do? We get the first difference first for each of them, right? Right. And then, so it's P minus four in this case. So it's P minus four. And then it's 11 minus P. And then it's Q minus 11. And then it's 22 minus Q, right? Clear? Yeah. And then we get the second difference because why? It's a quadratic number pattern. So now we say it's 11. So it's 11 minus P, right? That is being subtracted by P minus four, right? And that would have been what? It would have been minus two P 
plus uh, 15. Right, so let me just write it out. So that would have been minus 2p plus 15. And then in between here again, then when we take q, q minus 11, minus 11 minus p, we would get that it is uh, p plus q minus 22. Okay, let me try and write this with more space. So it's minus 2p plus 15. Um, and then I, the other one was uh, p plus q minus 22. And then between this one and that one, we would get that it is 33 minus 2q. Okay, so it's 33 minus 2q. When you say 22 minus q is subtracted by q minus 11, right? So that's what we get. So those are the second differences. But now remember what they want us to show. They want us to show p and q. But then the second difference, they actually gave us a very good clue. They gave us that the constant difference is one. So all of these are supposed to be equals to one. That's supposed to be equals to one. That's supposed to be equals to one as well, correct? So in this case, what do we do from there? If that's the case, right, then let's just equate. But we're looking for P and Q. So let's avoid the center one because it has P and Q, which makes it, then we'll need a simultaneous, right? So yeah. here we have 33 minus 2Q equals 1. And then here we just have minus 2P plus 15 is equals 1. So let's take um, this one and solve for P. And let's see if we get the value 7. And also then let's take uh, this one here and solve for Q. And we get that it's 16. So basically, that's what we're going to do. So we'd say it's 2P plus 15 is equal to 1. And that would be minus 14, uh, 2P, right? Minus 2P divided by minus 2, divided by minus 2. And P in this case is equals to 7, right? So it is yeah. equals to 7. Makes sense. And then we have here now 33 minus 2q is equal to 1. And now we solve for this. Uh, we take 33 onto the other side. That would be minus 32, right? So it's minus 32. And then after minus 32, uh, we have minus 2q. And we divide by minus 2, divide by minus 2. And then what do we get for q in this case? We get that q is supposed to be 16, right? So it's mm. 16. So basically, just like that, we've actually found the values of Q and P. And we've just shown that for P, right? Not big P, but small P. So for P, it's equals to seven and Q is equals to 16. And that's exactly what they wanted us to show, right? And so now 4.2 would ask us and say, says what, let's see. So it says, determine the general term T of N of the quadratic pattern, right? Now the general term of, a, of T of N uh, for the quadratic pattern, how would we get that? Now, knowing that we need uh, a general term. So remember for the general term of a quadratic pattern, it's A of N squared plus B of M plus C. That, A, yeah. N squared like that, right? But then, when you derived this, do you remember that the first term, right? The first very term, the first term is supposed to be A plus B plus C, correct? And then the term yes. following it would have been, uh, oh, wow, this thing, that, okay. The, 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 it went down again. Okay, that's irritating. Yeah, they're working perfect now. now yeah, it's working again. perfect. Now it's just switching off. I don't know what's wrong with it. Okay, you know what? Uh, let's do it like this. It's fine. I'll just uh, use the whiteboard. So, okay. I'm just going to rewrite everything again. 
Let's just use the white. Just start four point two sign. I did write down four point one already. Four point yeah, four point two. We're just gonna continue for four point two. So as I was explaining, so let me put it again down. So four point two. Ooh, I hate blue. Why is it blue? <laughs> Why is it blue? I don't like blue. And stroke. Okay. So, so now we have four point two, right? So four point two, right? And four point two basically was just asking us asking us for the general term of t of n of a of n squared plus b n plus c, right? And then I was explaining that remember the first term of a quadratic sequence or a, yeah, a quadratic sequence or a quadratic pattern is basically a plus b plus c. And then the second one would have been four a plus two b plus c. And then it would have gone on and on and on, right? But then when we get the first difference for it, what would it have given us? would have been 4a minus a, that would give us 3a, right? And uh, b minus 2a, 2b minus a, b, sorry, 2b minus b would give us just b, correct? And c would cancel each other out, right? And then you would have had another term here, and the other term in this case would have been, um, if I remember correctly, I think it has to be- plus b. Yeah, 5a plus b, yes, yes, yes. And when we subtract that, then we would have gotten 2a at the end, right. right? But now this is a very good clue, right? Uh, this is what we need to use basically, right? a plus b plus c and a, 3a plus b and 2a, right? This is what we're going to use to find the general formula, right? But how do we start off? Right, so we're gonna start off by saying, okay, we have basically, and 4.2, we're gonna start off with 2a, that's equals to what? So 2a, they actually did tell us what the constant difference was. If, if you remember, they said it's one, right? So then it's just divided by two, divided by two. We know that a then, that implies that a is just equals to half, correct? And then, mm. With 3a plus b, if you uh, go back to it, right, that was supposed to be equal to 3. So let's just go back to the, um, da -da -da. okay, this, this kind of sucks, but. Um, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, this kind of sucks because now I have to jump back here. So um, um, let's see. So, okay, yeah. So q, remember, is 7, right? So the first difference of Q and four would have been three, right? Because it's seven minus three, four. Yeah. So it's seven minus four, okay? So now it's seven minus four. So this is definitely equals to three. But now we have A in this case. So we just put in half, right? And then we solve for B. And when we solve for B, uh, we would get that B is equal to two, um, three over two. Right, three over two. And then we have A plus B plus C, that's equals to the first term. And uh, the first term, I think it was four. So yeah, the, the first term was four because it was seven minus four, yes. So, and we have A, it's half. We have B, it's three over two. We have C, I mean, we're looking for C and it's four. But uh, this would become actually just two plus C is equal to four. And therefore, C is just equals to two. Therefore, we have the T of N that is supposed to be equal to a half uh, N squared uh, plus three over two N plus two, right? So that's our N, uh, our T of N, right? So that's our T of N, yeah. The T of N is now on, you got it? I'm just writing it down. Mm -hmm. is all in squared plus in plus yeah, I got it. I definitely don't like using this this whiteboard thing. It's really really. Go, go on, go on use the other one. Yeah, let me. 
yeah, let me try and see if we will come back with you. So, but we'll continue here and we'll see what happens, right? So let's just continue here and we'll see. Or I just got an idea, actually. Okay, no, there will still be a problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, 4.3. Now, 4.3 basically says we need to determine n when the t of n is equal to two, 232. Right, that's a straightforward question in a sense, right? Because now the only thing we need to do, we take the T of N that we had solved and then we equate it to 232, right? And solve for N, basically, right? So let's do that. Okay, all these, so this is 4.3. And uh, basically uh, this was, uh, okay. So this was basically, uh, what? What do I want to know? Sorry? What do I want to know? No, no, I, this was basically, no, I'm, I'm talking to myself, sorry. So it's two of n, n squared, plus three of n, and I think it was two, it was two, right? Plus two, yeah. Yeah, and is equals 232. And then just solving this. So again, since we have fractions- Why did you, you know, go to 232? Sorry? Why do you say it's equal to 232? Because remember, this here on the left-hand side is T of N, right? This mm -hmm. here is T of N, but the question actually said, we need to solve for N where T of N is equals to 232. Oh. So if T of N is this formula there, then we can just put the formula in the place of T of N and solve yeah. for it. Right? And so basically we can do this. So we take uh, two minus 232, that would be just minus 230, right? And that's supposed to be equal to zero. Now, again, in this case, I mean, if you want to, you could use, you could, okay, you, let's multiply by two everywhere first. Let's just multiply by two everywhere first. And so if we multiply by two everywhere, then we get that it's n squared uh, plus 3n uh, minus uh, 436, uh, 460, is it? 460 like this? When it's two times um, yeah. 230, yeah? And then from there, um, we could use the quadratic formula. I mean, really, um, I'm not going to think about the factors of 46. 460, okay, so um, plus minus the square root, right, and it's three, squared minus four, uh, we have minus 460. Um, yeah, I mean, in this case, as, as I said, uh, I, 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 I mean, it's such a big number that I don't think uh, I'd want to invest my time trying to figure out the factors of why do you say minus four? My, you have minus four open bracket 460. It's minus four, right? Minus 460, right? We're getting, awesome. we're getting, yeah, we're getting the four from. The four comes from the formula of the quadratic formula. Huh? There's always a four. Oh, that, yeah. The oh. quadratic formula. Like, I what, what's it it? from? Well, you, you've got to something else now. Oh, no. I'm using the quadratic formula that we usually use for oh, yeah. um, solving for x. So, yeah. Is that, is that 2 next to negative 460? Where? 2 negative. The other side. That's 1. This is 1, right? One. 1 from the coefficient of the first term over there, right? And then basically that would give us what exactly? So the first n would be equals to um, negative 23 or n is equals to 20. Okay, are we done? This, are these two solutions correct? No. No? Which one is incorrect then? Uh, 
Let me just put it in my calculator. I'll tell you now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the twenty one is correct. So wait, I'm hundred percent oh, certain. So I'm hundred percent certain that the answers is negative twenty three and twenty, right? But now my question is more theoretical. What is the problem? with one of these solutions being, is it either negative 23 or 20? Which one? The answer is 20. It's 20, right? Why? Because remember, yeah, yeah, why? But um, I can, could you call it a, no, can't even negative. Yeah, you just, you were about to say it. You can't have a. You can't have uh, a negative incon? No, I don't know. No, you're right. You're about to say incon. You, you turn like you can't have a negative. A negative term number. Yes, term number. Because remember, <laughs> all terms start from what? From one yeah. to infinity. But it's not just any number in between the number lines. It is an integer, meaning that it has to be a positive whole number. So yeah. M can never be equal to anything else. Um, it can't be equal to half. It has to be a positive whole number, not a negative number or not a fraction or anything that has a decimal. It has to be a positive whole number, unless, they ask you maybe a question where they say, approximate the term number, because then they know at the end, it's probably gonna give you something that says it's 20.956. Then when they say approximate, then obviously then you're gonna to have to round off and say, final, final answer is actually 21, not 20.95 something, okay. You understand? Yes, that's correct. So, when, if they say approximate, you should have in mind that they probably want you to do something like that. Okay, now we have the next question. And basically the next question says, if the sum of two consecutive terms in the pattern, right? The sum of two consecutive terms in the pattern gives you 1,227, Calculate the difference between these terms. Okay. So now basically there's two things we need to do, right? To get to the final answer. Now, the first thing we need to be able to do is to find which two of these consecutive terms will give us 100 and, uh, 1,227. But also the second step to that would be to do what? to take those two consecutive terms and find the difference between them, right? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So basically, what we need to do is that we need to find first an nth, right? The nth term so that we can figure out which of these two numbers that uh, would lead each other. So this is, I think, 4.4, right? So 4.4. And so, they said the sum, remember? Let me go back to the question. So it said the sum. It said the sum of two consecutive terms. But now we don't know what these two consecutive terms are, right? We don't know what this n is, right? So you can imagine that you'd have some n, right? So you'd have maybe this n that we're talking about, and then the one that's after it, what would we say it is? It's the n plus one, right? Because it's the next one, right? But now this is the nth term that we don't know. And this is the n plus one term that has a value that we need. And these two values that we're gonna get here, right? 
after figuring out what our n is, would be the numbers that we would subtract from each other to give us the difference, right? But now the first thing they said was that these two values here, right, would give us, when we add them together, would give us 127, right? 1,227, sorry. But it's the sum. So basically this means it is the value of the nth term plus the value of the nth plus one term to give us 1,227. But now, if that's the case, right, we don't know what these values are, but we do know uh, something that actually gives us this values. It is the T of N, which is actually a half uh, of N squared plus three N plus two, right? But because we're talking about the n, then this one would be that one. So we'd say it's the half n squared plus uh, three over two n plus two plus the n plus term, but now it's n plus. So in the n space, you put n plus one. Okay, but I'll show you this here. So when we have to do it here, basically then it is um, the first one, so for the nth term that we're looking for, that would uh, be followed by the nth plus one term, right? They said these two things are sum to give us 1,227. So then that means that if we use the quadratic formula that we have of two of n squared plus three of two of n plus two, right? And remember this, would be the nth term, the first one before it. And then this is supposed to add with the half of n plus one squared. You see that? Yeah, yeah. N plus one. Yeah, again. Plus two is equals to 1,200. 1, complicated this. Yes, but you should get actually get used to this type of question and how they ask it because they, they like asking in such a question where they ask you, we have two consecutive terms, what are the ends? Or maybe the, what, are the, what are these two consecutive terms when we added them together, subtracted them together to give us the, this value and so on. So you need to be careful with that, okay? Yep. Okay, so if you can understand this one, um, if you ever run, run, I mean, what, run into a question that uh, is the same, then you should tackle it like that. So you can see in this bracket here, this is the formula for the whatever the n plus one term would be, right? So now when we do this, we just need n now. We need to solve for n basically. So having to solve for n, we have to simplify everything. So now it's half. And yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. This is a lot. <laughs> this is a, a, a lot, basically. But yeah. So in this case, it's n plus one to the power two. That means it's two brackets, right? It's n plus one and n plus one. Like this. So n plus one, can you see there at the top there? So n to the power uh, n plus one, n plus one, like that, right? Which is equal to the n plus one squared, right? So this, when we simplify it, then it's n squared plus 2n plus 1. So in the place of this, we could put in n squared plus 2n plus 1. So then we would say it's half of n squared plus 2n plus 1. And then we'd have here, it's uh, 3 of 2n plus 3 of 2 plus 2, right? Equals to so 127. And then from there, what happens? We need to actually find now the simplify, right? Yeah. Are you still there? We need to, yeah, I'm just checking if you're still there. So um, now, now from here, we just still need to simplify. So we can multiply this in. So if we had to multiply this in, so I'm going to rub out this quickly. Um, 
So you rub this in. So then it would have been half, right, n squared. But it, here we had two. So it would have been half times two. So that would have been just one n plus half, right? Plus three, or three over two n and all that, right? And then we just put everything together. So here you have half n squared and half n squared, which is just n squared, right? Because it's just one. And then we have three over two n. And then we also have three over two n. That would be six over two. And six over two would be uh, three, right? So it would be three n. And then we have two plus two, right? That, that actually gives us what? Four. But then we also have half and three over two, which is four over two, which is just two. So it's actually two plus two plus two, which is? Which is? Wait, did I calculate? It's two, four, six. Yeah, two, four, six. Sorry, uh, I said two, four, six. Wait, I'm checking something. I'm lagging. Okay, sorry, sorry. Can you hear um, me? Yeah, I can hear You're you. More lagging here before this. I didn't hear you. What is that, Master? No, I'm just checking something quickly. I'm checking something. Six divided by two is what exactly? Oh yeah. Excuse me? Yeah, six divided by two plus one. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, I forgot something here. Sorry. So here it's actually four. Right? It, this is four because it's three n, right? Plus n plus three over two n. And three over two and three over two n, that would be six over two which is just three. So it's three N plus one, and then it's four N. And then we have two plus two, which gives us what? That is four, but then it's one over two plus three over two, which is four over two and four and four over two is just two. So then it's four plus two, which is six. So it's six is equal to uh, not equals to zero, but equals to 1,227 like that. Right. And then from there, now it gets way more easy, I guess. Then we can just take 1,227 and um, put on the other side. That would be negative one, two, two, one equals zero. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be trying to think about this yeah. factors. So I'll use the quadratic uh, formula again. So it's minus four, it's four uh, plus minus square root uh, four squared, right? Squared minus four, uh, one, negative one, two, one. And that's all divided by two over one. And then your n, you get two n's, which is either minus 37, but we know that it can't be minus, right? Or n to be equals to 33. Okay. Yeah. So now we know that for the first n, it's actually the 33rd. What 33rd? 33rd n, right? The 33rd n. So the next one would be a 34th. Four. Yes. So it would be the 34th n, right? But now we hadn't finished the question, right? Because we still needed to find the difference in between them. So now, if you want the difference in between them, then we must say that for the 34th term, right? Subtracted by the 33rd term that is supposed to give us our final solution. So basically, what are we gonna do in this case? We're gonna put it in the formula. We would say it's half, right, of n, uh, so it's 34. We use the uh, quadratic formula. Um, I mean, the, the quadratic number pattern formula 
So it's three over two, uh, it's three, four plus two. And that's all going to be subtracted by, well, okay, subtracted, uh, there's no space here. I'm gonna write it underneath it, okay? So yeah. it's just gonna be minus. So that's the first, I really don't like this, this whiteboard. Uh, and it's <laughs> minus um, the other half, uh, which is 33 squared plus three over two. 33 plus and you'd take whatever the value of these two things is and subtract them and you should find that uh, the term 34 the the term of 34 minus the term of 33 right the difference between these terms would actually give us 30 and that would be your final final solution sure yeah, so there was a lot to do, right? There's a lot to understand, but a lot to do as well, right? Yeah. So that's basically how you would have done that one, okay? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm thinking, <coughs> how much time do you have right now? Because I'm thinking, oh, wow, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, not 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 like an uh, allocated time. I'm talking about. I want to try that app again, uh, but I, I'll have to swap my laptop. Um, have like a half an hour. Half an hour, exactly. Okay, let's, mm. let's see. I'll try and open it like right now. Hopefully it doesn't um, break down on us again. Right? <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, wait, maybe I should use the other one. Okay, no, it's fine. Okay, we'll see. Okay, it's opening at the moment, but let's continue and read the next question here. So when we read the next question here, now it's question five, and it's fun. It's functions, right? And so with functions, we have here. It said it's given. We have f of x where it's four all over x minus three plus two, and g of x, which is equals to x plus two. Okay, and then they say determine. So now they want us, uh, oh, the 5.1, sorry. So they say, we must write down the equations of the asymptotes of F, right? Now the first, this function F is what exactly? It's a hyperbolic function, right? Mm -hmm. And a hyperbolic function has two asymptotes, especially this one. If we didn't have minus three there, then we'd only have one asymptote. If we didn't have two there, we'd still have an asymptote, but it would be on zero, right? But now, yeah. in this case, what would be the two asymptotes in this case of f of x? So the asymptotes would be what? x, that is equals to three, and two. y, that's equals to two. How did we get this? Now remember the asymptotes, for the x-axis, for the x-axis, you take from the denominator and you'd actually yeah. equate this, you'd say x minus three, that's equal to zero. But when you solve for that, that's just equal to three, right? And then uh, your two, this is the y asymptote, then it's just equal to whatever it is. So in this case, it was plus two, then it's just y is equal to two. If it was minus two, then it would have been y is equal to minus two, right? Clear, right? That's correct. Okay. And then 5.2, they would say determine the x-intercept of function f. Okay, so now we need to determine the x-intercept of function x. So let's see if our app will cooperate now. Hopefully it cooperates because, wow, I am not definitely going to enjoy uh, having to do it on, on the yeah. on the thingy. Because you know what the thing is? Like, you can't even go back. You know what I'm saying? You can't even go back and look at what you did before, um, the question before. Because, um, you know, it, what, what the whiteboard, you have to actually... Yeah, it's not nice. Yeah, it, it's not nice, so... It's definitely not one of those things that I like using. 
Okay, let's try again here. So clear that and then paste. Okay, why, why, why are you doing this to me now? Okay, let me do this one more time. So this, this happens quite sometimes. Okay. okay. Copy. Okay, copy it on this side. Okay, and then go. There we go. Okay. Now we have the questions. Okay. Okay, let's hold, uh, let's cross fingers and hope for the best. So um, they want us to determine the X intercept for F, right? So F, so this is 5.2, and F of X is equals to, F of X is equals to four over X minus three plus two. Am I right? Yes. And so now if we want that, uh, the x intercept, what happens? We make y to be zero, right? So we would say, yeah. let y is equal to zero, or you could have just written it and said, let f of x is equal to zero. It's the same thing, right? It's just a notation difference. And so then it's zero is equal to four over x minus three plus two, right? And then from there, we just need to solve. So it's minus two, get four, get x minus three, then it's minus two, then it's x minus three, and it's four. And then we multiply that in, so that's minus two x plus six, four. We take that onto the other side, and that becomes minus two, right? And then this becomes minus two x as well. And um, then we just divide by minus two, and minus two, and therefore x is equals to one, right? But again, therefore, we have the x intercept. So this is the x intercept, which is uh, one maps zero. Zero. Right. So that would have been the x intercept. Now 5.3, let's see what 5.3 says. So with 5.3, now it says, they need the y-intercept. Now they want the y-intercept. So how would you make the y-intercept? Then you gain for f of x. So we say f of x. First, I'm just going to write the equation. f of x minus 3 plus 2. Now we let what to be equal to 0. We let x to be equal to 0. Therefore, you'd have f of 0, right? That's equals to 4 over 0 minus 3. Three plus two, and then that would have been minus four over three uh, plus two, and that would have been what exactly at the end? So f of zero would be equal to. Uh, let me calculate quickly. What would that be? Uh, two over three. Right. So that would be two over three. Right. Therefore, in terms of coordinate form, then with zero maps, two over three is your y-intercept, right? Okay, yep. clear, everything's clear, yep. awesome. Okay, and then 5.4, it says sketch the graphs F and G on the same axis, so clearly all the intercepts and axes, uh, with the axes and any asymptotes, right? So I'm gonna try and draw it here. Um, I already have bad handwriting and stuff, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I guess you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. So here's the axis. It's y. It's x. And then remember the asymptotes. First start off, especially with f of x. The asymptotes was x is equals to three, and um, y is equals to two. So let me just write that again, x is equal to three, right? And y is equal to two, that was the asymptotes. So we first start off with that. So let's say this point here is our three, and then uh, say this point here is our two. And so then we need to draw in an asymptote. And an asymptote, whenever you draw it in, it has to be a dotted line, correct? And draw in the asymptote, right? So there we have our asymptotes. 
And then from there, what happens? Then um, we look at the function of the hyperbola, right? At the top, it is four. It means it's positive four. But what does it tell us in terms of functions with positive four? Because this is your A, right? In the normal case, right? But now, if it's positive four, that would mean that it would fall into the Anything one first in, and quadrant one and three. Yes, quadrant one. But quadrant one and three in the asymptotes, correct? So yeah. in the asymptotes like that and in the second asymptote over there. We'll try and draw that again. Okay. Disappointing. Disappointing me, this one. It's not drawing properly. There we go. Okay. Okay, that's a very, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a good sketch, but I tried. So now yeah, we yeah. already found what the y-intercept was, right? The y-intercept was zero maps two over three. So we know what this point here is. It's two over three, right? And then we also know this point over here that passes the x-axis, which is just the x-intercept is one maps zero. So here it is one as well. Uh, I'm just going to put a small one. If you could see it, it's just a small one there. And then, um, so basically with the hyperbolic function, we're done with it, correct? Now, the only thing now we need to find is what? We need to find this equation for g of x, because they said for g and, uh, g, g and f. So the g of x is a straight line, which is quite simple. It's x plus 2. So if it's x plus 2, where would it go past the y-intercept? If, remember, the y-intercept is when you make x to be equal to 0. So in this case, if we made x equals to be 0 right, over there, then it would have been just 0 plus 2, and that would have been just 2, right? So in truth, then what do we have? We have that, basically, it would go past this point here in the y-intercept, the, the straight line, right? And then... For the x-intercept, we would have to make what to be equals to zero. You'd have to make um, y equals to zero, right? And then in this case, if y is equal to zero, so this would be equal to zero there, then it would have been zero is equal to x plus two. But then you take the, the, the two onto the other side becomes minus two. So then the point at x that we're looking at is going to be at minus two over there. So then when we draw it in, then we could draw a straight, okay. So it's very difficult to draw like this, but uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. I think I got it, right? Did I get it? Yeah. Let me slow down. So there's a straight line. So that should be our straight line. So then we have, this is the function of f and then this is the function of G. Okay. So basically, then we've actually done everything that we needed uh, to find here. We put in the asymptotes, we put in the intercepts, um, but the only thing they didn't ask us, the only thing they didn't ask us is the interception of F and G, which is actually the next question, right? To draw in. So now with 5.5, the 5.5 asks us what? It actually says, Calculate the x coordinates, the x coordinates of the points of intersection of f and g. So now, where do they actually intercept? They intercept at this point over there, right? And they intercept at this point over there. So there's two answers to this, right? And so if we want that, we would say the f of x is supposed to be equal to the g of x, right? Because one the intercept, and we know that g of x is x plus Two, and we know that uh, f of x is 4 over x minus 3 plus 2. Now, luckily, this is plus 2 and plus 2 on that side, so easily it's just x and 4 of x minus 3. And then we want to obviously solve for x. So how could we solve for x? Let's get rid of the denominator by multiplying x minus 3 onto this side. So then it would be x of x minus three, that's equals to four. Go up right up a bit. Yeah. Again, should I go again up? Just like that, yeah. Okay. 
And um, this is a 2018 paper, so if you want to also just check it out. Well done. Okay, um, you got it? Yeah. So then, from there, then we just simplify. So it's x times x, x times minus 3. So that's x squared minus 3x. And then we take the 4 onto this side. It will be minus 4, right? As equals to 0. But then this is a quadratic, so we can also just rewrite it like this quickly. And we just need to find the factors. Now, I mean, yeah, this one's easy to find the factors. It's supposed to be just x, but you could have used the, the quadratic formula again. Um, okay, you could have used the quadratic formula again, which is no problem at all. So that's equals to zero. So this is basically x minus four and x plus one, which would uh, come from uh, looking at four, right? What are the two numbers that multiply together to give us minus four? It's minus four and one, yes. And then what are the two numbers when we add together to give us minus three? Minus four plus one would give us minus three. So that's correct. And therefore we have x to be equal to four or x is equal to minus one which would make sense, right? As you can see, even with our rough sketch, um, this point here is above three. So it's four. And then this point here is below minus one, minus two, sorry. So it's actually what, minus one. So this is definitely correct. It's just four and minus yeah. one. And they didn't ask for the coordinates, right? What did they say? They just said the X coordinate. They didn't say, Mm -hmm. uh, what are the points of intersection? If they said the points of intersection, then you would have had to also find the y values for each of four and minus one, where they actually did intersect. Okay. Okay, is that clear? Yep. Okay, so then we go to 5.6. Now, 5.6 basically starts off and says, if x is less than three, right? So if x is less than three, Determine the values, determine the values of x for which um, 4 over x minus 3 plus 2 is less than x plus 2. Now, notice something here. This part here is actually what? It's our f of x, right? That is supposed to be less than our g of x. Right, because that's actually the formula for g of x, and this is actually the formula for f of x. So what is it telling us? So for all in, any number that is less than three, so we're looking from this point going that way, right? So this from three going that way, where do we see that f of x is less than g of x, meaning it is smaller than g of x, or it's below? So on the graph, right? When they're talking about smaller than, then you should think of it as being that the other one is above the other one, right? So in this case, what they said, they're asking us for f of x that is less than g of x. So that means g of x, we're looking on the graph and saying, where is the point where we see this function of g of x being above f of x? Right. So if it was the other way, then we would have said, if it was f of x, right, where it is above g of x, then the places that we're looking at, we're looking for places where f of x is above g of x. But the question itself, remember what the question is, it's f of x that is mm. less than g of x. So we're looking for the places where g of x, the function g of x, would be above f of x. So in this case, where would these places be? So let me use a highlighter. So if you look from here, from minus three, so this is the cutoff point. We start, we have to start looking for minus three going down. So from minus three going down, where do we see g of x above um, f of x? Um. So remember the blue one is the g of x and the red one is 
the f of x. So you're looking for where on the graph, you can see that this graph is above the other one. So in this case, which one is supposed to be above? It's the g of x that's supposed to be above the f of x. So you just need to look at the points where, not the points, but which space will, would you find g of x to be above f of x? I'm not sure. So if you notice here, you see g of x, it's over there, right? Uh, and then g, and then f of x is down there. You see? So it's actually what? It's in between the point of intersection and x that is less than three. So it's from three to the point of intersection. But now the thing is, we actually did find the point of intersection, which on this side, it is minus one, right? So at this point here, it's actually minus one. So it's from minus one to negative three, right? So in this case then, yeah. the final answer, uh, which is, what number is this? 5.6, so 5.6. So the final answer is that, it would be less than three, but it's also supposed to be less than minus one. Okay, not minus three, but three. Right. But where did we get the minus three? Remember the question it said, gave us a condition. It said, if it's less than three. So we had to start yeah. from less than three and see where this uh, case would happen. So there we actually find the solutions minus one between minus one and three. Okay, the next part of the questions. Oh, I actually have one last one here. Okay, maybe I can write this on here. Okay, so this one here, it says, now we have the line where it's y is equals to, can you see the question says, yeah. the line is equals to y is equals to x minus one, it cuts F at P, which is one map zero and Q. Write down the coordinates of Q. But now there's something that it, it actually tells us, right? It says it cuts, right? It cuts where? It cuts P and Q, right? So this line goes past P and Q. So if it goes past P and Q and we need to find the coordinates, what can we do in this case? We can say that we have y of c. And remember, what is this? This is the asymptote. That's, this is the symmetry line. Remember, uh, we have, okay, let me draw it quickly. So if we have that and there, we have a line of symmetry, right? And this is the formula for the line of symmetry, right? So this line of symmetry it says it actually cuts uh, between uh, point P and Q. But this point P and Q um, is, is at, F is at this point one and Q, right? So now we could first say, what would be the, um, the, as, the axis of symmetry? So it'd be X plus C, right? X plus C. And in this case, we know that um, the points that we're looking for is uh, in between three to two, meaning three maps two. Right, so it's three plus C and it's two. And then from there, C is just one, okay? Minus one, sorry, so it's minus one. And therefore, the axis of symmetry should be minus X, right? Or not minus X, sorry, it's, uh, what's this now? Uh, this, this, this uh, what you call it, annotation thing on Zoom is not so nice, honestly. It's really the worst thing ever. So now we have the other, um, so now we have the axis of symmetry. We can see that this is definitely the axis of symmetry, right? But now if that's the axis of symmetry and we need to find um, what Q is, this would mean that it would be the space from Q, right? So it would be Q of um, square root four plus, three and square root uh, four 
plus two. And square root four, where it comes from, it comes from a, right? Because it's actually a, the square root plus three. Okay. And then uh, basic, oh no, <laughs> I just rubbed everything. So it's the square root four plus three and the square root four plus two. But then square root four uh, is just two. So it's actually just two plus three and two plus two. And therefore Q would be what? It would be five maps four. Okay, it's five maps four. Okay, yeah. so basically how the, the, this one is a more tricky one and it's very unusual. Um, but yeah, you could have done it like that and uh, you would have gotten the, the, the correct solution. Okay. Um, we're actually making good uh, uh, progress, don't you think? Uh, compared to other days. Yeah. Uh, but I guess we can, we can I end guess, in the next few minutes. Yeah, because the thing is, you know, with, um, with what you call it, what's it called? We actually left with one, two, three, four, four questions. Because we had question six. So, like, uh, let's see, but I mean, we, let's, let's just see how, we, how far we get. What do you think? What, oh. what, what were you saying? Uh, I didn't eat supper yet, so I want to eat supper also. Okay. Um, so what I, I'm saying, what do you think um, about the last four? Because it's only four of them left. You know what? It's fine. Or do, okay, let me do this. Should I do questions six, seven, eight, and nine on a video? And then you watch it on your own time, you speed it up or whatever. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. Because, um, as you said, yeah, I'll do it on the video then. Okay. So we can maybe stop here, but I'll continue now. Actually, I'll continue now. I'll do them on and all on the video. And then I'll, I'll send it to you before. So you're writing tomorrow morning, right? Uh, tomorrow afternoon. Afternoon. Okay. So... Uh, as long as I send it, it gets by tomorrow before 6 a.m., something like that. Yeah, that's fine. So in between, you could watch it just before you go and write, right? Mm. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And uh, okay, other than that, uh, I'll see you tomorrow again. Yeah, thanks. For paper, which paper? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. we can take a break, actually. You want to take a break? Okay, we can take a break. Yeah. And then we'll see Friday, okay. Okay, awesome. And then Friday, we're doing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. As I told you, I don't have a problem with... Yeah, I'll let you know about thing. the time and stuff. Yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, so I'll see you okay. then. Yeah, bye. Okay. Bye.